Be good. All right, everybody. It looks like y'all are ready for this evening's program. It's going to be very interesting. We have two ladies here. Part of their um, ideas and their inception, and it's been a. It was over a three year project. We continue to work on it. And uh, these are founding members of our chapter, uh, Becky Jones and Sylvia Castleman. And if those ladies will come on up, you can say hi. I'll let you introduce yourself as much as you want to. Uh, Sylvia said, Becky, you would not let her escape out the door. You refused to let her out of here. So she's forced to be here to do this. <laughs> but, uh, they they both uh, served as officers and on the board of directors. We appreciate the help they've been, and we're looking forward to this program by them. Come on down. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. It's good to be here. Thanks to everybody that showed up to give us support. Um, yes, uh, both of us were totally involved in this project. We co-chaired the project since its inception. And I've been around forever. I'm older than dirt, so I know everything there is to know about this new project. <laughs> that is, of course, if I can remember it. And that was a real issue coming up with the, the dates and the, how much it cost and where we got it on this whole thing. So uh, Becky's portion turned out really beautiful, but I think it's because she had those slides already from time ago and I didn't have anything. So I had to take one of hers and I scavenged stuff and pieced it together. So and fortunately, this is just a little dry run of what we're going to be presenting the day before our tour at the the um, at the conference this fall. So it may be any mistakes that we might make here and be fixed between now and then. We'll let you know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We're your backup team. Your <laughs> yeah, I, we, I, I need a backup team. Well, I definitely do. <laughs> okay. What, what are you doing? We <laughs> better come back at once. Got to put it on mine. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're going to talk tonight about the the landscaping rejuvenation that we did for um, the cancer center at the Benny Cook Junior Foundation, and uh, to know a little bit about that cancer center. How did we get to there? I wanted the other one. That one. Um, it this this cancer center provides treatment free of cost charge to children of South Texas who have cancer. It's a nonprofit facility. And since um, 2001, 2001 and 2017, when we started working actively on the project, more than 80,000 patients have been treated at that facility. So uh, consequently, with that kind of a patient load, and knowing that they were treating free of charge, there was no money in their budget for landscaping. What they got when they got the building was what was still there when we saw it. Now, uh, Foss Jones, Becky's husband, was a member of the board of the Benny Cook Cancer Foundation. And he first became aware of this issue late in 2015. If any of you are new to this project or new to the chapter or new to the area and don't really know where Vanny Cook Treatment Center is, it's down here uh, at the corner, the southwest corner of 2nd Street and Expressway 83. So it, whether you're eastbound or westbound on the expressway, you can take that 2nd Street exit. South Beach Corner. South, 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 South Beach Corner. Corner. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, hey, do you remember where I live? Yeah. Did you have to get home tonight? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> okay. The Southeast Corner. Thank you, boss. I appreciate it. 
but um, this is a, a view of the treatment center interior there in the treatment area where the kids receive their infusions. And the first um, atrium that we worked on was right outside those windows. What? What, what happened? No. I don't have it on anything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I have to keep an eye on that thing. One eye on my notes, and yeah, there's something I don't have it on the timer. Uh, Thank you. Talk fast. No, I can't talk that fast. <laughs> I don't have it. Yes. <laughs> is this place we have it. Yeah. See, isn't this a great experience for her? <laughs> yeah. It's all ironed out. Yeah, let's try it starting. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, it's got to be steady as so much. If it works. Well, first of all, Cal, Sylvia is, um, is working on the uh, presentation. Let me just mention it um, for both of us. It's been a, a true nostalgic um, road trip here. Because it was so many years ago and so many different members participated. I'm going to do a caveat before I show the nice part of the presentation, and that is if you volunteered and your face or your image is not in the PowerPoint, I apologize, but there were so many members who volunteered in so many different capacities, whether, whether it was for one thing, writing a check. Helping with the auction, you'll find that out, or helping physically um, um, prepare the soil and so forth. If we can get, um, it was it was a cooperative effort of not just the master naturalists, but many other entities, as you're going to find out over uh, a large period of time. Um, some people have volunteered in this group with maintenance going back in, and you may not be included in the phase one, two, or three, but nonetheless, um, the beauty of the project, and we'll go into it, is that, uh, is that we went Maybe to the Cancer Center Foundation Board and said that we would be, um, we would be putting in the gardens, but that they would be maintaining them. So it wasn't an ongoing, uh, an ongoing project where we had to find members who were continually volunteer. The beauty of this was was the flash part of it, where we could get members all at once to come in to one part of it, and then that part would be over and accomplished. So there was a feeling of accomplishment that I think you're going to see as we go along. Okay, Becky, well, I wasn't listening to you, so I hope I don't repeat anything that you sorry I said. <laughs> okay, uh, when Foss came to the board meeting, the first board meeting in 2016, and he told us about the plight that the Vanny Cook Center was having, we decided we were going to volunteer to create the native habitats in their, three of their existing atriums that were around the center. And one of those is visible through the uh, windows of the chemotherapy treatment area. I mean, this was a really good opportunity for our little fledgling chapter. This was only our second year in existence, and nobody even knew we were here. So it was a great opportunity, not only for us, but to also help the community recognize how interdependent uh, all of the, the uh, all of the natural habitat that we have here is. And, and it was an asset to the master naturalists as well to show them, show the community uh, what what a, um, a good thing we were to have here as well. So we were gonna supply the materials and the labor to landscape these three atrium areas free of charge. And the timeline in some of these areas really was uh, pretty pretty sketchy because we had to not only get approval of the Benny Cook Foundation in some cases, but also the city of McAllen in some of them, and also in the hardscape stuff, um, we had to get approval of Bay Lodge of Medicine. 
So, and none of these ever made it the same time or the same place. They don't like to talk to each other, you know. So it was trying to coordinate between all of these and get approval from every one of them. So we started out immediately at right at the beginning of 2016 to create a committee here at the chapter for fundraising. We knew we had to have the money if we were going to give them all of this free. So uh, with one of our members who isn't here tonight, uh, Jesse Salazar and Becky Jones and another Jones, which is not related, uh, Lee Jones, uh, they set up a committee and we told them, okay, we want you to come up with ideas for future fundraising and also how to implement these ideas in a timely manner. So they've made a lot of suggestions, you know, crowdsources, sourcing in the case of nonprofit groups, raffles with silent auctions, and maybe even investigating some of the state of Texas grants for long term projects. But to make the fundraising more effective, um, you know, I'm talking on here, and now I know it's not forwarding. Isn't that wonderful? So, let me help you. Yes, I'll hold your microphone. So, it'll bring one like that. No, you do this. Okay. Tell me when. Okay. We, we, we wouldn't go to the next. Okay. Did you fly? Yeah. There we go. Yes. Okay. So uh, we decided, uh, and Becky kind of led us along here. I, I really was not familiar with how to do any of these things, that maybe having three what we call flash projects would be the thing to do that we could. Uh, get the materials and everything ready and get what we needed and then go out there and just spend a few days with a lot of people and finish an area and then move on to planning and recruiting and gathering funds for the next phase. Well, we quickly realized this one, just the little thing we could finish overnight or for that matter, even a month or two. We had a lot of big dreams. But with them came a hefty price tag. Well, we originally thought that we could do all three of these phases with maybe about $6,000 of, of chapter funds. So that's the goal we worked toward in 2016. Now, we had some pretty good leaders at the time. This slide is of Tony Reisinger, who is uh, the Texas A&M AgriLife representative for the chapter and uh, Javier de Leon, and I think most of you have met both of these. Javier is uh, the uh, superintendent over at the Texas, uh, at the Asteriana Gardi, working for Texas Park and Wildlife. So we were well on our way having these two people to guide us. We did a lot of uh, various avenues for trying to communicate with people who might, we thought might actually donate to the cause. And we, Conducted some silent auctions at our meetings. We always invited the public because that, those are the people who would uh, help bring in money that we weren't just trying to squeeze out of our pocketbooks since all of us had a limited amount. We couldn't just cough up six grand. So uh, by the end of 2016, doing all of these things like going on the radio, this was uh, Barbara Stores, who was the uh, extension agent for Pamela County at the time, and she interviewed Javier and me on the radio for her little garden gal uh, thing that she had on Saturdays. And this is Javier and me down here at the bottom um, on the um, show for, uh, let's see, what is that called in the valley? Inside the valley. And uh, we talked for a few minutes out about the chapter and about the project that we had going. So by the end of 2016, we had collected the $6,000 and now we were ready to go ahead with the project. This is a look at phase one, that area outside the treatment center before we started. Uh, the gate was broken, you can see that in the middle. And there were a lot of stones laying around the edge, which we, uh, collected so that we could use them again. We started out by taking measurements of the area, deciding how many square feet we had, how many plants were we gonna need. Uh, and in order to cut down the number of days 
we decided we would just use five days between the 28th of November and the 2nd of December 2016. That we used an average of 20 volunteers. And over those five days, we put in about um, 500 hours total working in this area. It, it meant removing all of the, the uh, surface that's there with the uh, old grass and the landscaping material, getting all of those stones out of the way, uh, clearing all of the weeds. It, it was a monumental task. So one of the things we learned right from the start was planning is of utmost importance. And, and for last minute takeaways, uh, we needed to know what to do with things that we bought, as well as any excess materials that we purchased, but we couldn't take back. So those were things that come up that we really hadn't planned on. And now we had to get creative and figure out how to make it work. Another thing was having uh, more than one person that you could have as the leader of a phase or that day. Because if you had one person and something happened, the car broke down, they got sick, somebody fell off the porch. I mean, you know, then everybody was, oh, what do we do? So you really need to have at least two people to, and this cost is actually to really work together. It cost everybody in the chapter to come closer to each other because we depended on one another. We designed this area for a butterfly and hummingbird garden, and we wanted to put a fountain there in, in the corner. We wanted that so that the children in the treatment area could look out there and with a couple of hummingbird figures, they could see the hummingbirds and see any beautiful wildlife that was attracted to the water and to the flowers. So um, that looked really good. We had six grand already, but between the cost of the hardscape materials and oversight from a local landscaping company for our water feature installation and lots of native plants and also valley adapted plants, we had almost exhausted our $6,000 by the time we finished the first atrium. But phase one was completed by the end of 2016. And in this particular case, we left that non-native palm down there in the corner. We left that there. And then we went ahead and supplemented and planted many of our native and valley adapted plants, such as the Mexican firebush, Turk's cap, yellow sephora, and various types of mist flowers. So it was really a beautiful area when we were finished with it. Now, phase two, was around the corner. And this area was about approximately 1,200 square feet. And it, of course, came with its own challenges. Um, the, the area is found by uh, the building on uh, one side and six foot solid brick walls on the other sides. So, um, Getting native plants that like living in the shade was a real challenge. It was a challenge. And of course, then there was lots of tarp in the area and all kinds of rubble that had to be removed to start transforming this area into the beautiful pollinator garden that we had envisioned. So to hold down the cost, we had tried to use the existing stones that were there to create a meandering path through these native plants, and uh, it forced us to really be creative in this area. We uh, we had to we had to plan on using what was available at the time. We had a list, and I think my next slide shows that. Yes, of things that we were going to use in there, and when it came time to do our planting, not all of that was available. So, and then even after that, some of those things that we planted, and this is the case with anything you transplant, some of it just didn't survive. 
but we did the work between February the 25th and March the 1st of 2017, five days. And we had it done. We uh, depended on people and local organizations helping us out by donating some of the plants. Some individuals who had made plants at their home donate. And, and we even reached out to other organizations, the Garden Club and Mission, the Master Gardeners, and got them to donate some native plants that they had available. Then we purchased some of them from the local native plant nurseries in our area. So it kind of kept our budget within limits. I think we spent about $900 on plants. And of course, uh, the mulch that went in the area, the compost that went in the area, all of those things were things that we had to work with. And uh, we tried our best to get uh, places like uh, the city of McAllen Composting to donate these items to us because of what we were doing. In some cases it worked, and in some cases it didn't, but we definitely did our best. We originally had, I think on this uh, slide, it shows a wild olive there in, as the focal point of that trail. And we had to later replace that. And so uh, if you go over there now, what you will see in that spot is a Paco de Chico. Now, after visiting with the director of the center, it was decided to make the third phase, this area, ADA compliant, that is um, handicap accessible, so that uh, for the benefit of patients and their families. Um, we're going to, on this one, we had to spend a lot more time in the planning just to get these kind of things approved. And we also had to spend a lot more time in the fundraising because of the added costs. But we wanted to provide uh, a shaded rest area with table and setting seating for the staff as well as the patients. And then, of course, at the very back end of that narrow, it looks very narrow here, but it's actually 16 feet wide. Uh, that long atrium, we wanted to put a basically wall to wall waterfall water feature. Now we have all of those rocks laying there. So we said, okay, well, we got to start with that. You know, maybe people who would get to use this water feature will use those stones and it'll cost less. And there were so many the entities involved in getting this approved that a lot more time was required. This is where um, getting the foundation and Baylor College of Medicine. City of Bank McAllen, all on the space. Now, our vision of the uh, phase three is over there on the left hand side. Look at that figure. We've gone from $6,000 to now we need another $28,000. It's like, oh, where are we ever going to get? that kind of money. Well, we started out the same way again. Let's get creative here. Robert Hernandez, who was the president in 2017, and I had an interview with the Tommy Hinge reporter, Rick Diaz, for a TV presentation, and that helped. It gave us some outside um, funding. And then we printed, presented our, fan, uh, our plans, I wish they had been fans, for the last phase to the city of McAllen, with a formal request for funding of the ADA hardscape, all of those canopies and cement walkways in the, in the summer of 2018. Well, you know how cities are where we really don't have anything in our, available for this year. So maybe we can consider putting it in a budget. So we kept after them and because um, we made sure we included the monarch butterfly calls in this area, then uh, that was the time when everybody was saying, oh, all the monarchs are going to disappear. We need everybody needs a plant. 
Fauna friendly flowers for these butterflies and the vibration. Well, it just so happened that the then mayor of McAllen, Jim Darling, was really interested in helping the monarchs. So that was a plus for us. And uh, this, the center was granted $12,000 by the city of McAllen for the hardscape. Then, of course, we had all of our people doing fundraisers here and uh, silent auctions there. And we were able to, between anything we had left and anything we got, come up with another $4,000. We had some other uh, larger donations. One was from uh, Mr. Jim Brown. Kathy has something in one of her slides about him. And then we had other money that came into the, the foundation for about $3,000 in some smaller donations, $1,000, but $20 here, $100 there. But now the total, look at the total, it's still $5,000 short. We're still $5,000. There's nothing here for plants. Or the water feature that we want. So we found another way to raise the money. Just so happened that Facebook was having a one day matching funds up to 12 million on what they were calling Giving Tuesday. And they invited us to create a site on Facebook for our cause and see if we could get donations in that way. With the help of the local, local Master Garden Association, I created a page for, that we put out there for that one day. And um, lo and behold, we got $5,000. Of course, uh, even though they were matching up to 12 million, apparently all of those people a millisecond past the time allotted to offer your your um, it, your money, but so we got no matching funds, but we still got enough people to donate that gave us that five thousand dollars. So now, after the hard scape was complete, we were ready to put in the plants. This is a picture of some of those people. Of course, we had to start by removing all of the unusable stuff. And uh, you probably can't see him from where you are, but there's Robert out there uh, throwing all of that stuff into the back of a trailer because we had to get rid of it somewhere. So we donated to someone who could use it. And then after we got rid of all of that, then we started bringing in the compost, that's that other pile that you see there in the middle, and mixing it with the soil that was there. So finally, in the spring of 2020, the master naturalists and the master gardeners volunteered together to plant the, to transplant these native plants and the valley adapted plants. And uh, these were including things like frog fruit, goldenrod, esperanza, kidney wood, and many other plants that were available at the time of our planting. It was one of those things that we had to just work with what was available. There were many obstacles along the way, but the pleasure of seeing the results of time and effort spent over the years made it quite worthwhile. We received a, a Second place exemplary project award at the state conference, which came with five thousand dollars, which we used in the project. And there on the left hand side is the invitation to our dedication, which was in June 2021. Five years in the making, but it was well worth it because, in the words of Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, is the only thing that ever has. Thank you. Um, I hope that Sylvia gave uh, enough information to understand. Uh, 
Yes, I think uh, we were. Uh, we've been sort of joined at the hip <laughs> for not not only for five years, but for this past week. Mm -hmm. And uh, all I can say is, if you have a project and you need a co-chairman, <laughs> you know, still be the person. Um, I want to mention one thing before my PowerPoint begins, and that is, if you are watching on Facebook or if you're watching on WebEx, I'm not sure that you're going to hear the the music, uh, or if the music comes through, it may be a little bit um, a little bit scratchy. I believe uh, is what yeah. Jeff was. Pardon? It'll probably be a little bit uh, quieter and maybe uh, distorted a little. A little distorted, and we're still working on the music uh, once again, but. Just relax. This is going to be a nine minute presentation visual. And once again, if I don't show you in some of the photographs, um, I, there were just so many people. It was hard to um, capture everybody. So anyway, this is um, going to be our nine minute recapture.
Well, I'm all cheery. <laughs> um, as you can see, it's a, it's been a wonderfully rewarding experience. I mean, for the people who were involved, oh, I'm sorry, a wonderful, and Sylvia's already, <laughs> um, a wonderful and uh, experience for the people involved, because uh, for one thing, there's a sense of purpose there. And you can see how sharing your love of nature can uh, be one way to uh, enhance the lives of others. And does anybody have any questions or anything? Yes, there's no time for work day. Pardon? The work day. Oh, yes. So, as you can see, that um, after we have breezes and, and the drought, we periodically go in and renew. It's not like it's an ongoing every week. So we have set up one day, September 30th. Um, at, uh, I'll send an email out. Um, it's going to be a, a work day to renew this, uh, the eight before we have the convention because uh, at the convention, we're going to have one field day um, that's dedicated to coming to the um, atriums that we uh, have as our project. So I'll send an email. I would like for everybody to uh, pre-register if possible, uh, because that way I can let you know what to bring. And we also, we do provide water. Uh, we make sure that we have enough water for people and things like that, and sometimes extra tools. But I'll send the notification out um, with regard to that work day. Thank you, Jennifer. And I see Jesse back there too. Hey, Jesse. Are, are there any other questions? Oh, I'm sorry. How much large plant material did you have to remove? Uh, Sylvia. Um, yeah. How, how much large plant material did you have to remove besides grass or sod? Were there any large shrubs or trees? Uh, yes. Yes. We, we picked out a couple of trees in the second atrium uh, because they were already um, growing in the wall that was there. And uh, of other ones in that other and we took out a large portion of ficus that was in phase three. So, yes, there were some big things to remove. Robert, you, you remember some more of those? Uh, those hit just along the wall. Oh, yes, they were a nightmare. Yeah. Were you able to save any of those? Or no. And, and uh, I could say primarily there really wasn't any, uh, there was no vegetation. I mean, it was just primarily black plastic pebbles, a large percentage. I want to say about 80% of that. The center was built in the early 1990s. Community breaks the money, late 80s, HCA gave the land. Please. Had no clue about landscaping. I don't remember but it was landscape, but nobody thought about the fact you've got a breastplate on your north side, you've got a second street on the other side, so it's virtually so hot that the landscaping to some extent failed. The idea was to have windows because at that time we started out with linear accelerators and radiation was still uh, going, and where people sit there for a while. That more as the community brought it in, in chemo. And so the master naturalist for a perfect application by using native plants that could withstand you know, the, not just normal but lack of moisture and that the expression. So it's a perfect group. Yeah, I just noticed in the photos it was shrugged down to 20 places. Mm -hmm. We had an extensive rose garden. Oh. On the second street side, the people that get a memorial road before the whole thing died. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I have to say that we do have one commitment, and John Taxter is the one who's, who's performing right now. The only long term true commitment that we have is uh, would be three hummingbird feeders outside the infusion room um, because. You know, we we felt like we wanted to have a distraction for the, you know, for the children during the infusion, also for the staff. I mean, a lot of this was for the staff, 
And so that is our commitment. And if anybody would like to do that, it is ongoing. And the beauty of it is that you can um, uh, all of these atriums are outside. So you just need the gate code. You've already been cleared because your master nav was you need the gate code and just to change the hummingbird feeders, you know, whenever and you do it at your convenience. Um, and that's the one ongoing commitment. That's the only ongoing commitment we have are those three hummingbird feeders at the infusion room. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Do you have any like documentation or video or whatever from the responses of the families and the patients just to add to the beauty of what's going on there? Well, um, what was kind of interesting, and you probably got this, is that we were in, we had finished phase three right when COVID started, right? Yeah. And so we were not we were not allowed, and nobody went there to even do the hummingbird feeders. No one was allowed there, and we honored the the safety and security. So we really haven't had a chance to even ask about it. The dedication and the reason why we couldn't include the whole chapter. They had a, it was limited in in numbers because it was, you know, once again during during the that particular time and everybody was very hesitant. I mean, you're dealing with um, uh, a, a young population that's very um, vulnerable. Yes. So yes, I'm sorry. Is, to our foundation board meeting to the, the Texas Children's Hospital. Man. Treatment inside the facility with COVID, they're always nervous anyway because immune systems are compromised. Kids get chemo, but it was reported at our board meetings, the foundation, uh, lots of parents, kids commenting on because not only could the patient sit there, look through the window, hummingbirds uh, or butterflies, on. also, and, and this is why this whole thing again is. I guess originally we were for any radiation treatment. The first linear accelerator south of San Antonio was nothing more right up for us up the valley. And the whole thing, just as with chemo, your whole family has to go and get to the Houston. Very disruptive to large families in the neighbor state. But if we have a lot of comments coming from the medical staff, Don reported them to that how it was entertaining. Plus, when the kid comes, you might have mom and dad for their chemo, but they might have some brothers and sisters, and they can go outside and sit in one of the atriums mm -hmm. and entertain themselves. And the staff, I mean, especially especially during COVID, it was vital for them to be able to go outside, you know, and that was important for them when they ate their meals. You know, that's uh, where I heard from the director um, that. It was an essential part of the staff to be able to go outside to eat. Texas children are extremely sensitive. They send people out of Houston to inspect the building because of the wind and immune systems. Like when we had those hail storms down here, we had, we had some hail storm damage. They got to come in and they got to look for bowls and all just because they're, they don't want to do anything. Our kids are getting to one of those things. In modern times, in our more modern system started, this used to be the end of the world. People, it was hard to staff. But now, with all this telemetry, WebEx, this kind of stuff, they pretty much can sit here, they can have a patient, they consult directly with the doctors in Houston so they can have much more expertise brought to bear to local. Any other questions? Well, I think it was an excellent presentation, and I don't think the annual meeting took off. I love music. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and, and having the information first, and then just getting to see those videos, the, the pictures showing the work and the final products here, that's great. And we want to thank everybody who worked on the project over the years. Uh, many of y'all are here. Those of you who are new, yes, look forward to continuing to work on the 
garden a couple of times a year, maybe if it needs some maintenance and upkeep, replacing those occasional. I don't know how they're going to survive this heat this summer, but they've done okay so far. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see come work day. And um, we can look forward to future projects by the chapter that can address some more issues, hopefully. And with that, I want to remind everybody whether you're guests and leaving the hours, please enjoy some more refreshments. There's still cake back there. Uh, if you want to take a few minutes and go get something to drink or something else to eat, um, and then um, we'll start the business meeting in about five minutes. So I'm going to say something to Sylvia and Becky. I think that I think it was brilliant. <laughs> I, I think that the, the second part of it also, yes, of course, was, was good. I thought I really enjoyed that. The music, whoever put the music to it, well, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, so, well, the middle one just kind of came naturally. <laughs> Rocky. I mean, it's just there were so many rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so really thank you all for putting this together. And I know we're going to shine at the safe meet. So thank you. And so as well, I thought you had left. So uh, can you come up for a better little plant for you? So, <laughs> bird's nest fern. So, and again, thanks for being this. Show. What's the background? It's uh, basically an indoor plant, so be careful with it. Thank you, so. Robert. Thank you. I have recently learned how to get this to grow outside. It will grow outside in your yard. Just talk to me. Mine's been in the ground for a month now in the sea. <laughs> So send us an email on how to do that. Yeah. Do it. You could write an article for the newsletter, right? I also want oh. to thank our previous uh, 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 presenters, the McGee's. They presented on gaps and some but, uh, dragonflies on our last meet. So come up here and receive one as well. Thank you, guys. Say no Thank you. And our first meeting that we had back in what July, June, June uh, Nina Westerville presented on uh, guarding for bats. Get a little messy. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Okay, thank you all for uh, your presentations and anybody else uh, here in Zoom land. If you have uh, a, any topics that you would like to talk. Talk about uh, talk to uh, Miss Rhetoric over there and she will set you up. Okay. Do we have all the percentage ready for the rest of the year? Or? We are set through October and the board has not um, figured out the plan for November and December yet, but next month is snakes and we're hoping to have live snakes so i hope to see all of you back here next month for some snakes it should be fun and then october we won't have um, a general meeting because of the state convention Thank you. all right in addition to the refreshments back there i don't remember if i've reminded you to sign the sign-in sheet but we do want to take account there's been about 30 here tonight so our group is growing and that's great. I mean, we have a large group anyway, but a lot have been on Zoom or didn't want to come, don't like Zoom and didn't get involved. And we're waiting for these in-person meetings. So I know there's some here tonight uh, that are here because we're having in-person meetings again and visitors are joining us. And we appreciate that very much. Okay, I think everybody's had a little bit of a minute to have a break. So we'll start the business meeting. And for those who don't know me, before the break, you guys kept talking. That was the break. Well, I take the break. All right, I'll stop talking. See, we're really taking a break. Oh, do we the whole hour? I think so. We discussed it some afterwards. We were helping with their critique. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, we're going to go ahead and resume the business meeting. We have people waiting on WebEx. That, uh, hopefully, that gave them a little bit of a break, too. But if I could have your attention and we can go ahead with the business meeting. All right, uh, the agenda was sent out to all the members and um, be sure you've signed in so we have a good attendance count and uh, Jennifer's uh, check the attendance online so we can keep track of those people. I want to thank Becky and Sylvia again. That was excellent. I don't think anybody at the annual meeting will be disappointed. Um, Gail has sent out the treasurer's report. They were included with the agenda. So um, unless you have any issues with the treasurer's report, and I don't see anybody jumping up, waving their hands, saying there's a problem, we will file those for audit. The minutes of the June and July meeting were compiled and uh, also sent out. And if you, does anybody, did anybody notice anything that need correcting or changing or? Okay, I know I did not include the hours or the number of attendance for the July meeting, but I now have those sign in sheets and I will add the attendance information uh, to those July minutes. And other than that, uh, if anyone has other additions or corrections, let me know. And otherwise, we'll file those with the noted change that I'll add. Uh, Jennifer, you already mentioned the September meeting and the snakes. You want to say anything more about that? Mm -hmm. uh, please come. <laughs> I was class of 2020. We had to finish our class online. And I'm so excited to see everybody here tonight because that's I've, I've missed it. We got like two months of that and then we had to go into quarantine. So bring some food to share. Come see the snakes next month. All right. And then, like I say, that'll be September and then we'll have the October meeting and then the board is going to decide probably at their next meeting here exactly what we're going to do for the uh, no, a combined maybe November, December, we need to look at uh, nominations and election of officers before the end of the year and a management kind of a management's retreat for planning for the new year. And that all has to take place between the end of our annual meeting and before the first of the year. So we'll get that calendar ironed out. And with that, um, River, did you have any other awards? Uh, we do have two awards for today, but neither person is here. And it's a recertification for Rosa Flores. Rosa and Flores. We, yes. And we have an initial certification from the 2023 class, Bill Baker. 
Bill Baker with the 2023 class. Rosa helped me at the Ferry Fest, and we had a ball, but I have never been so tired in my life. That's what we got through. We had close to 6,000 people come through there. That, that was a lot of people. Well, thank you, River. Um, Education Committee. I know uh, Jim Jerry is still out and about. Uh, Anne, did you want to say something about the fact that we'll be meeting to start meeting and thinking about the next class? The Education Committee will start meeting in October. Jim returned. And if there's anyone who's interested in being on the Education Committee, all of us planet speakers, either let me, Jim, or Donna know that you're interested. Yeah. Um, Again, this year we'll have the classes in person for the first time for a while, and we'll need somebody to help with refreshments and have to get that organized a little bit. And um, the room setup is not too bad. I think this would be fine for the classroom most of the time too. So and the church has been real good, and I did talk to the church uh, representatives tonight, and they're going to look at their calendars. And we'll be sure and let them know what dates we're looking at so that they can clear that on their calendar. We get the room reserved for that and for our general meeting. So we'll be working on that. Um, Anita, I know you sent out some stuff about the, the dragonflies at Odo Olympics. And I put that in under volunteer time so people could remember to do that as volunteer. Well, I just want to know how many of you met the deadline for the Chachalaca? On the 19th, and they wrote a story. You write a story. Are you writing? Look, me, there's one at the back. Yes, good, good. I want to thank you for that. Um, I sent around in the email a couple of months ago about uh, two things that were kind of ongoing. And um, one, Joseph and Becky have uh, participated in it, and that's the opportunity to tell your story. For the 25th anniversary of the Texas Master Nationals, I'll pass this around, but I'll send an email later uh, this week. And another one is uh, to remind you of the Texas Park and Wildlife 100 Years of State Photo Contest. But anyway, I'm just going to pass that around, and that's just a, a recap, and I'll send you emails about it. All right, thank you. And. Uh, Joseph may want to talk about the webmaster in IT, but he also has Ronnie's membership committee um, report. I don't have anything prepared for the website, but let me get the Ronnie's report up. I didn't give you any warning. <laughs> well, I knew it was coming. I just didn't get around to it. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we go? don't keep him at all busy. <laughs> so there we go. <clears throat> It was there for a second. It is. All right, so this is Ronnie's report from August. Uh, 149 hours eligible members, 114 active, 35 in training from our recent years, uh, 21 unique members logging service for 80 hours, 17 different uh, opportunities, uh, 18 unique members log volunteer hours. Uh, 231 hours, uh, 11 uh, to 80 hours, three different opportunities for 15 hours. And this is our impact. Uh, 231.25 total hours equals $6,599 worth of impact. And for the uh, year to date, that's 96,000 from our chapter. Uh, and we have 15.25 total advanced hours training uh, here today, 508 hours. They were to take that in Okay. Um, Anne had agreed a few months ago to help us with the outreach and the two outreach things that will be coming up that are not immediate, but Vincent Rio Grande Valley State Park has their centennial event. Saturday, September 23rd it is from, I think he said, 4 to 4 to 8 p.m. There was a flyer out there. I don't know if there's any more left, but we'll put the hours on our uh, volunteer opportunity. 
And he says just an informational booth. We don't necessarily have to have an activity. So uh, maybe calling on some volunteers to help man that booth on Saturday, September 23rd. And then further in the year is the Coastal Expo at the Far Natatorium in early December, the 7th and 8th. So just keep those couple of things on your calendar and watch for volunteer opportunities there. Um, advanced training, Becky has been doing a wonderful job at that in our field trips. So she's uh, regularly posting at least a couple of times, if not three times a month, um, AT and keeps up track of all those. And uh, our next field trip we have set up is Saturday, September 16th. It's a beach field trip and social. Do you want to talk about it just a little bit? Get them enthusiastic about it. Well, I'm enthusiastic, and Anita might be able to help me. Oh, I'm excited about it. Well, you know, I'm excited. Well, okay, so the, uh, it's going to be on Saturday, September 16th. Uh, it will be at um, South Padre Island. The topic is going to be including shells, specifically shells of sea beans. Sea beans and shells. Sea beans and shells. You found Anita. Anita is the person who has been arranging the speakers and the field trip. You want to? If you want me to? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is really exciting because it's on the beach and it's going to be a it's the Blanco because it has bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> we must keep well, our priorities. Uh, well, yes, yes, there comes an age when you do have to do that. But here's what, what we're going to do is beach come and you can pick up shells, sea beans, and uh, whatever you find on the beach. If you want to pack it with you, you can. At the, uh, the social at Becky's, uh, I will have Linda McGonigal and Linda Butcher, who are Texas Master Nationalists at the other chapter, and they're experts on sea beans and seashells. They're going to bring all of the books. There's less than a dozen, but they'll display the books that, that they recommend for beachcombers here in, in our area, mm -hmm. and uh, they will help us identify our treasures that we bring to them. Uh, one thing, uh, I was out with Linda Butcher last last month one day and I had I found something that I knew what it was. And I said, Oh look, Linda, don't you think this is such and such? And she says, You're really gonna have to clean those up if you want me to identify them. So just to so she doesn't get snarly with you, uh, <laughs> clean up stuff before you ask her what it is. <laughs> At any rate, uh, we'll, we'll we'll get yeah, so you want people to sign up tonight, right? Uh, well I was gonna say I'm gonna send out um, instructions because it's a social, we're thinking about having something very simple like hot dogs, you know, something very, very, very simple, but I'll need to have a number. So once again, like everybody who went to the field trip um, in uh, in Brownsville at the weather station, um, get an idea of how many people, you know, will be coming so that we can provide enough, uh, enough food for the social part. One of, one of the things that I'm, uh, it's logistics, so it's beyond me at the moment, but uh, Isla Blanca is a county park, and it's that uh, they have admission admission charge, and it's per car. So um, this is where the logistics gets crazy because I don't know where everybody lives, and where you want to park, or where you want to meet up. That's something you're going to have to do on your own. If you're military or a veteran, it's at uh, half price. Uh, so. Have the, have the drive the car. It's ten dollars. It's ten dollars. What? You have ten dollars here for car. I think it's ten. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. And and since you have the floor still, would you like to take a moment to tell about the Brownsville field trip and how that went? Well, I um, I see some members here who were uh, there at the field trip. I think it was very educational. I don't know which part um, anybody wants to mention was the balloon release, maybe the most. I think that was the most interesting part, but I mean, um, Kathy, what? Oh, and also going back, with, with the presentation that Barry did was awesome. It told us so much. It also advises if you want to learn more to come back in the fall. You can bring a, a group of Interested citizens just call and line it up if you've got a neighborhood and friend you want to bring over there. But going into the actual 
oh, I guess we caught the hot room where all the screens are and computers and seeing the people work. They all took the time to explain what they did, what they were looking at, and what it meant. Their thoughts about this coming depression and where it might go. And it was so fascinating. We, we, we loved it a lot. Great, great use of our time and taking the uh, hallway, as Robert recommended, with a piece of cake. It was much better. <laughs> All right, sounds like it was a good time. The time I spent at the weather station was up in Amarillo when I was a ham operator, ham radio operator, and I would volunteer to man the ham radio station at the weather station when the tornado chasers were out. And so they would be reporting to me and I would record their conversations and pass it on to the weather service people so they could notify newscasters and such. So that, that was very interesting to be in the middle of stuff when things are going on. Those weather people, we always complain they never give us enough time and enough information, but it's a it's a job in the hand. All right. Susan has some volunteer project information she's given us. We talked about the Benny Cook cleanup day at the end of the month. And I wanted to mention, you know, um, uh, last month's presentation was by the McKees on the uh, Odinites, Odinites, the um, dragonflies, the damselflies, and um, in the uh, material I sent out is the information about the um, uh, Od Olympics, which is an iNaturalist project. You can go under projects and click on the August 2023 20, Od Olympics and Od Olymp include the Olympics August uh, 2023. Yeah, Olympics 2023. August. So have, yeah, August 2023. And and that's in there. And if they also have their own um, odonatocentral.org uh, site that you can go through for more information. And if you want to post on there, you can get, go through them too. But you know, we're all kind of familiar with iNaturalist and like to get out there with that. And you can certainly join that project and add your observations to that. Yes, yeah. If you could, they much prefer you post on what are not essential. Okay. Uh, they're not sure they're going to be able to transfer the information from my address. Okay, and that um, information is out there. You need to write down that uh, website where you can go to the get, get the information there. Um, the Next bit of did you have anything else than that, Susan? No. Okay, the annual meeting registration is now open four hundred dollars till the end of the month. And at the end of the month it goes up uh I think fifty dollars. So you'll save fifty dollars if you plan on going. You go ahead and register before the end of the month. Uh, the chapter uh board reviewed our finances, which are very healthy right now. And if you're a certified member and sign up and then volunteer four or more hours at the event and get that documentation back to us in a reimbursement form, we'll reimburse you half of your registration fee up to the $200. So we're hoping that will encourage some members to attend. Who I can't, yeah, that's a chunk if you're a couple that volunteer and, and, and that are members. So if we can help by doing that, um, we certainly want to encourage attendance at that. Yes. A question about that. So when you're going to do the weekend, and the volunteer can get half of the weekend standard rate. Uh, there is a, a right for, uh, I'm not sure which. Uh, yeah, there is, there is a different right for the lesser amount. Uh, it, you can pick the days you want to attend. If you only want to attend Saturday, they have a fee for that. And if you want to do two of the days, there's a fee for that. And I know Sunday is mostly awards and recap. I was trying to remember if there's any, there's a field trip, I think, on Sunday. But Sunday, there's not a whole lot of the presentations. Uh, and then, so you can get on Friday to Friday, Saturday. Those would be the best two days if you're wanting to walk, see a lot of the programs. The, the schedule is on there that lists all the speakers and their schedule. But yes, there is a lesser fee, and we'll do half of whatever that fee is. So if you only sign up for the two days, um, and again, fewer 
volunteer hours too because they're only there for two days. We don't want to spend it half your time there. Well, and I've mentioned that some of those volunteer hours could happen before. Yeah, so. um, good point. Those of us that are working ahead of time, doing some planning ahead of time, we may need still, still some help before the event happens. Like Ann's working on silent auction stuff, and we've been doing all sorts of stuff since the first of the year. Um, those hours count too. And if you want to post your hours, it's under chapter business and annual meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Just post it under the annual meeting under the chapter business. And that will go towards the four hours. So you can say the if you still do some four hours, but it doesn't have to be at the event, especially if you have a lesser time there. I uh, would encourage you to do that. Sign up sheet back. Um, yeah, and there's a volunteer sign up sheet at the back. Uh, if you want to look at the hours available, if you want to sign up there, then what Joseph will do is take it in and we have a shared folder with the state of the other chapter and we can add your name to that shared folder. And, and basically that form back there is what it looks like in our shared folder. But that way we can, can uh, get you plugged in there. And I'll send out a note, updated email copy of that too if you don't want to do it on paper tonight. Yeah. Okay. And and do you want to talk about the silent auction that you'll be tending to? And the other thing they did decide just this week, we have kept asking because we have the Vanny Cook uh, tour and um, the silent auction, and we have volunteers like some of the master gardeners who said they would help with the tour. The state did say if they signed up and registered as a volunteer. They and don't intend to attend any of the convention, they will give them a special pass so they can still volunteer and not have to pay. They've been saying, oh no, the volunteer, you have to pay the $400. I thought, that sounds as bad as my other organization I volunteer for. Yeah. So, um, that, but they have agreed, like if, if Ann's going to spend all of her time in the silent auction, then she doesn't have to pay the $400 because she's not getting the, the true benefits of the. Convention or the so, food. Yeah, the food is so expensive there. So, and solid option. So we ask for, we're looking for donations um, for the same option. What we do for our Christmas um, option is bring it into the beating. And I'll figure out something for having books. Sorry. Any donations right along, but it'd be helpful if you brought them to the meeting. I want to pick them up for you. We put them on a spreadsheet and you get credit for it and a chapter goes to it. And Jennifer, you want to talk about the contest that so Jennifer's been working on contests. So the submissions for the photo and art contest are open. Um there was I think Joseph sent out an email about it a couple days ago. Um, you can submit everything online and it's not just photography, it's also art, so painting, sculptures, um, quilts. If it's related to Texas nature, it should qualify for the contest. Uh, it doesn't have to be done this year, it just can't be previously submitted to the TMN contest. Uh, we are having some technical problems with the submission form, so if you try to submit and there's a problem, please email me so we can try and fix it. And the submissions go through the 18th of September, and um, then voting will start October 1st for people who register for the state meeting. All right. Any other questions about the annual meeting? We would encourage you to attend. There's some very interesting talks going on. There will be other very interesting field trips, some of which have been building up. And, um, and then the Saturday is the day of the eclipse where we go off site away from McAllen out to a big ranch and get some entertainment and watch the eclipse and get uh, educated about eclipse also. All right, new business. Joseph Connors has looked up some information on us about t shirts because we kept saying, you know, my t shirt's got holes in the bottom of it. I want something newer for the annual meeting. So he has found uh, information that uh, he and Gail worked up uh, through our current printer who's done these before for us. And I'll let him tell you about what he found out. Okay, so, um, well, first I'll thank Maria Diaz who came up with the idea. We're gonna try a different material this time. 
we've always done cotton before, and we thought the summer that's pretty hot, especially with a big logo on the back. Uh, so we're going to try a dry fit material. Um, the the company's BAW Athletic. They specialize in in um, shirts for printers. So probably haven't heard of them unless you get a lot of shirts with logos on them. Uh, it's 100% polyester, uh, breathable, moisture wicking, UV protection. Um, and so we're going to try some different shapes this time, not just all one boxy shirt. Um, so uh, I'll send out an email showing the sizes. Uh, we noticed when I looked at the sizes before that the, the uh, they're a little odd. They measure it. it they measure just half the shirt, I guess, because they're printers. That's what they're targeting. From here to so, here. yeah, that's not going to go around. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, when you when you look at the shirt and check the measurements, be sure to pay attention to that or it's going to be very big when you get it. <laughs> um, and so we also. Since uh, we're looking to reduce the, uh, the amount of ink on our back and reduce the cost a little bit, uh, we're going to try doing a three color print instead of our usual seven color. Um, and we'll also take out the blue sky background so we'll have more air breathing on our backs. Um, and if you don't like this style, when we go back to our new class shirts in the January, we'll go back to the regular full color printing, unless everybody just loves these. We'll figure that out uh, as we go, uh, but I think it's worth a shot. Uh, that's not the final design. Uh, they were just showing us a sample of what it might look like. And then this is the prices. Uh, the standard shirt is 14. Uh, the standard women's is 14. Long sleeve or 16. And then uh, the double uh, XL and triple XL add two dollars, three dollars. And so. If anybody hasn't had experience with that material, uh, this is a sample uh, youth shirt, not anywhere near what we're going to be wearing, but uh, and we are still going with green, not pink. <laughs> but if you want to check that out, um, the, the shirt that I go butterflying with all the time, it's uh, like a fishing shirt. It's made with a similar material. I love it. It's, I, I didn't think uh, one of our comments was polyester might be too, too hot, uh, but uh, so that's the only thing I wear when I go outside during the day. It's just too hot to be outside and it breathes really well. Could you pass that around? Yeah, please. Well, thank you. And, um, that's, did you have an order sheet back there? Or are you uh, gonna wait? I've got the information is back there if you want to check it out, but I, I'll send out an email. I didn't have time to create a, an order sheet. That, that's great though. So um, watch for the order sheet, just give us the count. And we want to try and get a minimum of 20. I don't think with this larger group these days, we're going to have a, a problem because I know I want to replace some I have and get an extra two. I'm going to add a PS. I want to thank you for getting something with UV protection. Because one thing, everyone writes about climate change, but the biggest thing they're not talking about yet is how the UV is increasing. So it's critical if you're out there in the sun, have something wrong that's going to protect your skin. All right, yeah. So, and, and we do get out in the sun here in South Texas. <laughs> uh, Robert, it is your turn. He has the most favorite job in the world oh, yeah. as past president. And he's, been past president and he's had to put up doing this for four years now. Okay. And he's tired of being past president. <laughs> Which means we need a new president. We don't want to get rid of it. Okay. So thank you all for being here, President, today because uh, that's uh, one way when where we can um, meet people that we haven't met before, uh, talk to them, and see maybe they have special skills that we need uh, to fulfill the roles of the board and the directors. Uh, otherwise, we can't do it. Uh, we look at uh, the applications and we see where, you know, the skills that they have, they do have, maybe have served in other uh, boards, for example. And so we can see that. So the nomination committee will, will look at that. 
but we like to also invite people to step up and if you have those skills, uh, or you can help the, the, uh, the organization by helping us fill these roles. Okay, the, uh, the nomination committee is composed of myself, which uh, I chair the committee, along with River and uh, Anne, and we look at uh, all the uh, applications and, of course, Anne knows most of the, the uh, trainees and uh, what they bring to the to the chapter. So we sit together and we look at all, all the uh, applicants and current members and previous members that are lost in action. And so we come up with a list of nominees, but you can help us by stepping up to fulfill these roles as well. Uh, the, uh, I know we changed it last year. Now we have the, uh, the, nations or the voting takes place in December, right? Yes, we're going to try to move that up so that the new slate of officers, we usually try and have a retreat, have time to do some planning and not to crowd it all in after Christmas or before the first board meeting in, in January, which is the first Monday of the year. And so between Christmas and that first week in January, it's crowded to try and do anything. We're going to try and do it early in December. Okay, so, and so my job is to have that slate of officers or nominees ready 15 days prior to our last board meeting or a uh, general meeting, rather. Uh, so that brings us to about November, latter part of November, somewhere around there. So between now and then, we'll, we'll be looking at at uh, or, uh, looking for nominees. Uh, lately, we have had only one one nominee per uh, seat, and so we want to at least have a couple so we can do an actual vote. Okay. So let me go over the positions that we have. Of course, Donna, she's ready to move on. She's ready to become our next past president. <laughs> She's been a, a man, uh, the president for the last four years. And I know uh, she uh, decided for three, possibly four, I don't know, I can't even remember. But it was, uh, yeah, it was quite a while. So yeah, she's ready to move on. And uh, so we need to come up with someone to pull field her shoes and it's big shoes by my act. She's done a really great job for us. Uh, the other positions will be the first vice president, which is Joseph over here. Joseph uh, also is the webmaster, so he is really supposed. To, we're supposed to be grooming him to be our next president, and uh, we've okay. asked and asked, and uh, he's not. He says he's got a lot of work to do. I mean, he's, he does a tremendous job as the webmaster, and I don't know. We can still ask, <laughs> but if anybody else would like to fill that position, let us know. For the second vice president, uh, Jennifer Rectoric, uh, she's been with us two years, I think, as my second vice president or first year? This is my first year as an officer. Okay, so, uh, and and her role is to chair the, the program committee, uh, mostly, right? And she takes care of the programs. And then our treasurer, who's not present, Gail, Gail Rice, uh, she's been off and on for us with us for like, Three years now, four years perhaps, also doing a tremendous job. So, anybody has skills pertaining to keeping our finances in, in order, please uh, let us know. And then the secretary, uh, Leslie Tuxmore, she's not present. I think she was online. Feeling online. Yeah. Okay, Leslie, she's online. And uh, she also has been with us just this, I think, this our first year. Okay. As far as the directors, those will not be part of the voting. Uh, that takes place um, probably at the beginning of the year, and the president will, have, will uh, do the nominations for that or selection of, of the directors. Some of them uh, have been with us a few years also and also ready to move on. And that's what we need to uh, for you all to volunteer. The immediate past president, which is myself, I, I, I am. Uh, the one that handles the nomination committee. Uh, we have the membership director, which is Rodney, and of course he uh, sends a report 
he has, uh, I think his work conflicts with our meeting. So a lot of times he's president, sometimes he can't make it. New class director is Jim. Gary. Jim Gary, yes. And of course, Ann and sister, I assist him with that. Uh, communications director, uh, Nita Westerbelt, and I'm sure everybody knows her. Uh, advanced training director, Becky Jones. Uh, she's the one that just made the presentation right now for us. Uh, volunteer service projects director, Susan Coleman. I think you've been with us for three years as well. Four. The second yeah. three call. And I think. She uh, me in and let me go. Yes. And again, doing a fantastic. Everybody's doing a fantastic job. It's just that we do need people to, to step up and build those positions. And then the new class representative. That was Mia. Mia. She's the one that came up with the shirt idea. Okay, mm -hmm. Mia. Uh, she's not present, right? Yep. Yeah. And then uh, the advisors, of course, uh, I did the new one, Tony Rice. Again. They ain't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> We're not letting them open. It. No. And so once we get a, a slate of officers, we'll we'll turn that into Donna. She'll publish it, and uh, we will do the voting in December. In the meantime, we do ask people to consider, uh, if you, especially if you've had uh, board experience in other organizations, let us know. Uh, we'll send an email out with all three of our names and uh, email, so you can. Uh, Shoot us an email and let us know. And, and we'll be making phone calls also between now and then. Okay. And it'd be nice if uh, people show up in person so that we can know each other. I've met uh, people that hear that uh, from other places, from other parts of the state uh, that are wanting to join us. Uh, example over here, and then new members of the class of 2023. Can't remember your name, what was your name? Melissa. Melissa, and she's from the Austin area, and she's very interested in becoming a member. And I met Rosell there, who I never seen. I look at him; he's got a South Texas border back. So who is he? You know? And uh, so I had to talk to him and see who he was. And of course, members that uh, uh, have been absent for a few years. And though that's the reason behind being here in person, so that we can talk to each other know what we're all about, uh, what's our interests, and so on and so forth. So we can talk to you about becoming board members or directors and helping out the organization. Thank you. Thank you. And I can tell you it's been fun, but my, my term started January and in March we closed down for COVID. So we figured it all out. The, the next <laughs> it was my fault, my sister says. What is a sister for? But uh, yes, so um, it is much easier when things are in person. Uh, it is so much more fun to be in person. And there's not anything. Uh, I mean, Becky and Sylvia came up and said, this is our trial run. We gave them good feedback. They'll probably take away from that. We back up each other. And certainly as past, as past president, I'll be available at any time for the new president to consult with. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it's, it's not difficult. Uh, it, it does take somebody like uh, like someone else in our group said that she doesn't want to be up here in the front of the group. She lets me do the talking. She worked hard at other things, so I'll let her get by with that. <laughs> <laughs> but we all have a role to play and uh, we all have our strengths. So uh, thank you all for considering uh, any volunteering. Uh, as an officer or director. With that, does anybody have any other business? Otherwise, I'll go on to a few announcements. Okay, our next board meeting is September 11th. Right now, those are still virtual. If you ever want to sit in on and listen to what goes on and understand better what your roles might be or what our conversations are, if you want to be a director or officer, those are open. Let Joseph know and he will send you the invite. The next general meeting is September 19th here at St. George's. September is snakes. That's how I could remember that. <laughs> oh, I think it's the 18th, right? Yeah, I remember thinking that at one time, but that didn't look like the right date. Okay, thank you for that correction. And then uh, we're not going to have an October meeting, as mentioned earlier, because our state annual meeting is the 12th through the 15th. 
And we'll let you know about a November and December meeting when we have nomination of officers and then election of officers and an end of year shindig. So, and there'll be good to eat then too. If that's it, we will adjourn. We had one hour of advanced training for the wonderful program by Becky and Sylvia on Betty Cook. And it looks like 45 minutes for our business meeting. And that's chapter business. And on your volunteer time, which is the chapter business is volunteer time, you do add the time coming and going from the meeting. You include your travel time. Like if it took you 20 minutes to get here, 20 minutes to get that back, that's 40 minutes. You round it up to the quarter hour. So you have 45 minutes of volunteer time for your travel time plus the 45 minutes for the business meeting. So see, you get volunteer hours just for showing up and staying here to listen to all of our comments. Are you taking, uh, are you, do you have a list for the sheriffs to sign up? For uh, he's going to send yet. out the email. So not tonight. Yeah, I don't have anything ready tonight. Okay. As that's, he had nothing better to <laughs> Yeah, I had two spider presentations this week. Oh, so yes, yeah, if you uh, watch some of the, the news flyers and information about different programs going on, and that's included in the AT information back you can send it out. Okay, and next next month at the library uh, is a bat presentation. Uh, I didn't know we had anybody that was in the bats other than Anita. Uh, oh, it Patricia was is uh, no, it's Patricia at, uh, at the at the library is doing one for next month. Uh, who is Patricia Diaz? 23rd. 23rd. Oh, on, on, on what? On bats. bats. Somebody's come out with a gardening for bats book. Mm. <laughs> we didn't know you wrote that fast. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we'll adjourn. If you see some refreshments back there, uh, Robert, did you have one other thing? Enjoy the rain. Yes, enjoy the rain. If we have some, if you have rain gauges out, you can do your. Daily count and documentation of rain and add that as a volunteer thing if you signed up for Coco Rapos and have the measuring stuff. So I can help you with that if you want to measure brain once a month.